Hey YouTube, Dawson Ryder here. This is going to be my next installment in my sort of how I would adapt a Sentai series into Power Rangers video. I've already done two on Zenkaiger, and my intention was to work my way backwards, immediately starting with Kara Major. However, Lupat has recently been in the spotlight. Lupat, spotlight! Thumbs up if you get that reference. For a reason which I'll talk about here at the beginning, so I decided to do my next installment on that. So, recently there's been discussion on Twitter and the PR fandom about Lupat being adaptable because Simon Bennett, the current EP, was doing a Q&A and he said it could never be adapted for certain reasons. And uh, same thing with some other seasons, and it set the fandom aflutter and whatnot. And I just want a disclaimer here, this isn't meant to be any sort of negative comment on any person working on the show or any fans or anything. But this type of conversation is the exact reason why I want us to personally stop doing Sentai adaptions, which is a funny thing to say when you're about to do a Sentai adaption video. But I'm just tired of the closed-minded thinking it creates between the people making the show and the people watching the show of what we can and can't do because of what the Sentai did. That's so closed-minded, and I just don't like that because anything is possible, and I think if we're not shackled to someone else's work, we don't even have to worry about it. I feel like, even with myself, where I don't think we should be shackled by it, I find myself thinking, oh, we can't do this because they did it. Like, no. No other show has to deal with this. They never think, like, well, I wish we could have the scene of these two talking. Someone else didn't already film it, though, so... I just want to say I don't think any Sentai is unadaptable, which is part of the reason that I did the Zenkaidra video, because people said that was unadaptable and I wanted to prove that you can think of anything for any season. So I won't go into any other reasons, I just wanted to say that at the beginning. So this is my adaption. I'll try to put a timestamp so that you can start the video here and you don't have to just hear my rant. So much like with my Zenkaidra adaption, this is going to be, I would have it so that it's kind of entrenched in some big PR lore that you would understand and be rewarded by if you were a hardcore fan, but you wouldn't necessarily need to know to enjoy it. Kind of like Dino Fury. I think that's actually pretty cool what Dino Fury's been doing. They have some really big lore concepts and returns and stuff, but if you're a new viewer or a new young viewer, you're not going to be lost. But if you're a longtime fan, you're excited over the Morphin Masters for a different reason. So, first of all, let's address the cops and robbers thing. Uh, because that was one of the things about you can't have them be thieves or cops or whatever. I don't want to get into anything messy with that. I'll just say that you don't necessarily have to make them that. To be fair, the Pat Rangers is kind of hard not to make them cops, but I feel like you can make them some sort of galactic defense force. You don't necessarily have to. With Lupat, even though their suits are based off of thieves, they're very easy to not make thieves. You can completely separate them from that, in my opinion. I mean, if we can have pirates not being pirates, even though people won't stop whining about that, you don't have to make them that theme. To, to start, but I'm just going to say I wouldn't make it Cops and Robbers, not because the Cops and Robbers is controversial, but because I like to take things as far away as possible from the Sentai, because I'm not interested in seeing the same story. So, I would have the, I mean, even though I've said it's not going to be Cops and Robbers, now I'm going to make Pat Ranger the SPD branch on Miranoi. Yes, Miranoi. Uh, I've wanted to see a season set on Miranoi for the longest time, and I think it would be cool if they were the SPD Rangers for Miranoi. Now, then the the Pat, or the Hat Rangers, the Lupin Rangers would be called the Phantom Rangers. And awesome, there's already a Phantom Ranger. I know. That's why he's going to be their mentor. And this would be the conflict. It wouldn't be cops and robbers. The conflict would be this philosophical debate on the quote unquote right way to be a Ranger. Is it the organizational style of SPD or Lightspeed Rescue or Time Force? Or is it the kind of classic Ranger way, like Mighty Morphin, or Space, or Jungle Fury, Dino Thunder, any of them that hasn't operated without any sort of organizational supervision? So that would be the philosophical difference, and you would be kind of examining that. And you would have the Phantom Ranger leading the Phantom Rangers, who is very strict about Zordon's code of you can't reveal your identity, um, you know, you can't get personal gain from it, no escalating the battle, which I think is the stupidest rule. You would kind of think that SPD is allowing for personal gain because, like, through promotion and career of being sort of a galactic police officer. Um, and also their identities are known to the public. And that would be the sort of conflict. It would be kind of a meta in a way, kind of debating what's the right way to be a ranger. Like something like Lightspeed Rescue or something like Mighty Morphin. And that would be the conflict. As for the plot, our POV character would be the new Green Ranger. This is where I'm borrowing from um, Pat Ranger, Lupin Ranger a little bit, but because our original Green Ranger has disappeared. So our POV character is the new rookie Green Ranger on the Miranoi branch, and the original Green Pat Ranger, or the SPD Green Ranger, was... Drumroll. 
J.J. Oliver. If you don't know, J.J. Oliver is Tommy Oliver's son, introduced in the Soul of the Dragon comic, briefly mentioned during Dimensions in Danger, who winds up becoming B-Squad SPD Green with a green shield, and so at some point after the events of Soul of the Dragon, he got promoted to the Miranoi branch as Green, but he's mysteriously disappeared, and we have a new Green Ranger in their place. And the SPD Rangers of the Pat Rangers and the Phantom Rangers of the Lupin Rangers are fighting this villain organization, which is, gonna, you know, the main villains from Loop Pat, for control of these items, which are the Lupin Collection. And these Lupin Collection items, um, I don't know what I would call it, Morphin Collection, are mysteriously all connected to the Morphin Grid. That's why they're being sought after. They have a connection to the Morphin Grid, which can give people powers, and so you have the two Ranger teams and the villains competing for it. And JJ's... Disappearance would be a theme throughout the show uh, for a little bit about a running mystery. And uh, basically, bottom line it here, JJ's going to wind up being the Gold Slash Silver Ranger. Um, the Gold Slash Silver Ranger would show up and be a little bit mysterious. It would be a mystery identity thing at first. Um, the audience and the Rangers wouldn't know who he is, but the audience would find out first that he's JJ. In fact, I would have the audience find out JJ is the Gold Slash Silver Ranger within a few weeks and then the Ranger teams don't find out till way later because his goal is he's going undercover with both teams to bring them together because he need, he knows he's going to need the might of all seven Rangers to ultimately defeat what the enemy is planning, and that's his goal. In my ideal world, I would totally not get rid of necessarily, but have a gold and silver suit that looked completely different so we could have a two-date trope where they don't know that he's the same person for a little bit and they legitimately think it's two different Rangers. I wish Loop Hat would have done that, but providing we have to work with what we got with gold and silver, it would be known he's working with both teams, but his goal is effectively to get them to work together. And to be clear, when I say work together, I'm not talking about, Nagumbaya, golly gee, let's all work together. Like, by the end of the series, they would come together, all seven of them, to defeat the enemy and recover this morphing collection. Um, and, and save the items or whatever. But it would just be for the one-time thing. And the resolution would be that they accept each other's differences effectively. They still have disagreements, but they allow each other to coexist, even though they're always going to kind of have a philosophical debate about the right way to be a ranger. I mean, I don't know if they would ever say, like, oh, there's one right way to be a ranger, but the bottom line is, at the end of the series, I would have it so, you know, they don't agree necessarily, but they're... Um, they have a mutual respect by the end, having working work together to allow each other to coexist. Because I feel like it'd be too cheesy for them to come together to be all one team. And the goal would be for JJ to get them to work together for this one-time only thing. Now, something else I thought about doing, um, which I think would be a little bit too confusing if I was trying to make the show for a casual audience, would be the reason that these Lupin Collection items are resonant with the Morphing Grid would be the same phenomenon that happened after Shattered Grid after the world was put back together, or the multiverse was put back together, because of Shattered Grid, it created these effectively Morphin Mutants, these people that got powers from the Morphin Grid that weren't Ranger powers, they were like mutant powers. And this would be a similar situation, a similar side effect, that these items suddenly now resonated with the Morphin Grid and they need to be kept safe. Now, one question I feel like people might ask is, well, probably two questions. One is, well, what about their morphers being the same? I'm going to be honest, I didn't think about that until I just started sitting down to film this video. I thought about a lot of stuff for this series, but I didn't think about that. And you could take that a couple different ways. I think you could say that these items were, much like in Lupat, part of the collection, and both the Phantom Rangers and SPD got their hands on them and used them in different ways. Or you could say that there was originally six morphers for SPD, and the Phantom Ranger attempted to steal them, believing that they didn't deserve to have Ranger powers, but he only managed to get away with three of them, created his own powers. There's just a couple different ways you can go with that. It's easily explainable. The other would be, I feel like somebody is going to ask, like, would Tommy be in this because of his son? No. If I was doing this, my whole point is I like the idea of it being entrenched in lore to make it feel like part of this shared universe with rich lore, but I don't want it to be about any returns and cameos and stuff like that. If I were to do anything like that, it would be in some sort of post-series story or do like a skull level cameo from Samurai where you have a scene at the very end where Tommy comes to visit him on Miranoi and you see them hugging. That would be it. I wouldn't need Tommy to be involved at all. Especially since recently, you know, with Zed coming back in Dino Fury with all these people being like, is so-and-so going to come back? Like, I wouldn't want any of that. I would want it to be self-contained but rewarding for those that like the show. I suppose a similar question might also come up about their shared mecha and I would maybe do a similar thing. I guess for now, let's just say in mine, that all the tech was originally SPDs and Phantom Ranger doesn't like organizational rangers for some reason. 
and he stole, I guess the rangers can't be thieves, but in this case, he attempted to, you know, uh, take the tech believing it belongs to true Power Rangers and repurpose it for his Phantom Rangers. But I feel there's a bunch of different ways you can explain it. I feel like people are going to see that as a problem, but there's a, a bunch of different explanations you could come up with as to why they're sharing certain tech, you know. So I'm not too worried about that. That's That was never something I was hugely concerned about in terms of the concepts I was excited about for this. So... That is how I would do it. I would have it be SPD versus the Phantom Rangers and a debate about what's the right way to become a ranger with Tommy's son, J.J. Oliver, in the middle trying to bring everyone together for this final fight. So let me know what you guys think of this adaption, how you would adapt it, because I know for a fact that Lupad is not unadaptable, just like all Sentais, and I will continue this series. I don't know whether I'll go in order after this. I might just do it randomly. Like I said, I was originally going to work backwards, Zenkaidra, Kara Major, and so forth, but now that I've stepped out of that order for this, I might just kind of go in a random order depending on which one I'm inspired by. But that's about it, guys. Until next time, if you like, comment, subscribe, and climb the steps, ring that bell. See you in the for my videos. Dawson Ryder, signing out.